Hi, I am Julie Gorman. I'm glad you could join us today. I'm one of the four pharmacists on our team who specializes in bioidentical hormone replacement therapy for women. At U.S. Compounding, the pharmacists believe in the importance of the triad. The triad is a relationship between the physician, patient, and pharmacist. What are natural hormones? Bioidentical hormones that are derived from plants. Bioidentical hormones are exactly identical in chemical structure to those made in the human body. They have the exact chemical structure as hormones produced by our bodies. They are chemically processed from yam or soy plants. Synthetic hormones are also termed as patented, conventional, or artificial hormones. They are altered in chemical structure and activity from human hormones and are usually not found in nature, at least not in humans. This is a comparison of the chemical structure of bioidentical progesterone and a synthetic progestin, medroxyprogesterone. Medroxyprogesterone is used as a contraceptive. The additional components of the progestin can alter the way hormone receptors interpret hormones. This is the steroid hormone cascade. It represents the cycle and metabolism of hormones. This process indicates how complex we are and how all of these hormones can have an effect on the others. Some of the hormones that should be considered in this cascade are cortisol and DHEA highlighted in green, testosterone highlighted in blue, progesterone and estrogens highlighted in red. We have three main estrogens made by our bodies. The first one is estrone. Estrone is a strong estrogen. It is made most abundantly after menopause. Estradiol is the strongest of all three estrogens and is made most abundantly before menopause. Estriol is the weakest of the three estrogens and offers protective effects. We have three life stages. Premenopause begins with the first menstrual period. During this time, there can be fluctuations of luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, estrogens, and progesterone. The most common problem associated with premenopause is PMS. One can also have fluctuations in endorphins and serotonin as well. These are often treated by reducing stress, diet, and exercise, but also can be treated with progesterone and some antidepressants. This is a representation of a woman's monthly menstrual cycle. There are two phases, the follicular phase and the luteal phase. The blue line represents estradiol. The black line represents progesterone. During the follicular phase, a woman can have approximately seven days of menstruation. Here, the estradiol begins to increase, and then after ovulation and during the luteal phase, the estradiol levels out more, but the progesterone increases. So, the mid-luteal phase demonstrates the best balance between estrogen and progesterone. The second life stage of a woman is considered to be perimenopause. This is the time between premenopause and menopause where a woman can have fluctuating hormone secretions due to intermixed normal and abnormal cycles. This period is often referred to as a period of estrogen dominance. The third life stage of a woman is considered to be menopause. Menopause can be defined as missing 12 consecutive periods or having a surgical hysterectomy. Some signs and symptoms of hormone imbalance can include the following, depression, fatigue, poor concentration, hot flashes, breast tenderness, insomnia, anxiety, painful menses, irregular bleeding, irritability, hair loss, fibroids, water retention, cholestasis, weight gain, decreased libido, breast and uterine cancer. These are symptoms that can be experienced more often and more severe as women age. 
Let's take a look at some estrogen risk and benefits. First, let's take a look at the risk associated with excess estrogen. The following are some signs and symptoms and risk associated with too much estrogen, such as depression, fluid retention, headaches, poor sleep, irritability or mood swings, fatigue, increased risk of autoimmune diseases, weight gain, increased risk of breast and uterine cancer. How do we get too much estrogen in our bodies? One way can be from an exogenous source of estrogen, which means from an outside source. Another way can be improper bowel movements. Bowel movements are needed for the metabolism of hormones. An increased amount of adipose or fat tissue can also produce excess estrogen. And the fourth way is insufficient progesterone levels to balance out estrogen. Some benefits associated with the adequate amount of estrogen can be increased metabolism, increased insulin sensitivity, helps maintain muscle mass, estrogen helps improve our sleep quality by helping us stay asleep at night, preventing Alzheimer's, reducing cataracts, reduces our risk of overall heart disease by 40 to 50 percent, numerous cardiovascular benefits, decreases our wrinkles by maintaining collagen in our skin, decreasing blood pressure, maintaining memory, helping with concentration, maintaining bone density, and increasing energy and sexual interest. Let's look at some ways to promote healthy estrogen levels. Using a conservative customized dose, maintaining a diet high in grains and fiber helps to eliminate hormones from the body, moderate exercise, stress reduction. B vitamins and folic acid are also very important for the metabolism of hormones. Omega-3 fatty acids or fish oil have many benefits including but not limited to hormone benefits, heart benefits, skin benefits, and also maintaining a healthy body mass index are ways to promote healthy estrogen levels. Let's talk about progesterone and testosterone. Progesterone can be considered to be the happy hormone. It helps to balance out the estrogen. It helps to improve sleep by helping women to fall asleep at night. It has a natural calming effect because it has a smooth muscle relaxant effect on the body. Lowering high blood pressure helps the body to use and eliminate fats. Lowers cholesterol, increases metabolism, it can be considered to be a natural diuretic, a natural antidepressant, an anti-inflammatory. It can also stimulate new bone production, enhance the action of thyroid hormones, and improve libido. Testosterone is another sex hormone that's made by women. It can be responsible for increasing sexual interest, helping with our sense of emotional well-being, increases our muscle mass and strength, helping with our memory, helps keep our skin from sagging, decreases excess body fat, and also helps maintain bone strength. Some natural ways to improve libido are decreasing your calorie and increasing your protein intake, getting enough exercise, losing weight, stress reduction, and getting enough sleep is so very important to improve libido. Cortisol is a stress hormone that's made by the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys. Cortisol should increase during times of stress and start highest in the morning and then gradually fall throughout the day to be lowest at night. The cortisol is produced and increased during times of stress as our physiological response to that stress. The stress could be from a normal daily process of stresses in life, such as your job, your family, but then there are also stressors that are out of the ordinary, such as financial crisis, death in the family, a divorce, any type of surgery that you have on the body also places stress on the body. The cortisol is going to increase during these times of stress. Functions of cortisol include balancing the blood sugar, weight control, the immune response, 
stress reactions, and sleeping patterns. Here are some symptoms that can be associated with a cortisol imbalance. With high cortisol, one can experience fatigue, irritability, insomnia, sugar cravings and binge eating, increased osteoporosis risk, a decrease in the immune system, low energy, night sweats, increased cholesterol, insulin resistance, thin skin, muscle weakness, easy bruising, weight gain around the midsection, and an impaired thyroid function. Those symptoms associated with low cortisol, which could be adrenal fatigue, can include fatigue, low blood pressure, insomnia, a decreased sexual interest, a decrease in the immunity, emotional paralysis, allergies, an unresponsive thyroid, hypothyroidism, which does not respond to treatment, a feeling of being overwhelmed, emotional imbalances, lack of motivation, and digestive problems. This is a representation of a four-point cortisol tested through saliva. Cortisol follows a circadian pattern, starting highest in the morning and falling throughout the day to be lowest at night. An elevated nighttime cortisol can cause the inability to fall asleep and or stay asleep. Night sweats, the inability to shut off the mind and increase the heart rate. This unrestful sleep pattern can cause, can cause morning and daytime fatigue. The morning cortisol should be your pick-me-up for the day. But if the morning cortisol is low, this can cause morning time and daytime fatigue. Balance is the key. We are looking for a balance between cortisol, sex hormone, as well as thyroid hormones. So sometimes patients are referred to their physician for thyroid testing to achieve overall hormone balance. At US Compounding, our goals are to see symptom improvement within two months. We want our patients to have an improved overall health and quality of life. We strive to reach overall hormone balance through using conservative dosing, adequate and appropriate nutrition, regular exercise, and stress management.